everyone! Today I'll be reading Lesson Zero from Drawbox. This is a free drawing fundamentals program and a majority of the lesson content is written on the website and the creator, Uncomfortable, has also made supplementary videos to further explain some of the concepts. The written material is super, super important and I know a lot of people don't like to or can't read very well, so I wanted to make some audiobook resources for them. I'll link the lesson itself in the description so you can follow along with the text as I read it if you want. There are also other audiobook resources made by other wonderful members of the Drawbox community. The two I know of are Victor Powder and Scylla Stew. I'll leave links down below if you're interested in their readings. Also, before I get into this, there is a video from Uncomfortable that you're supposed to watch before you read the lesson notes. I'll link it in the description and in the card. Done with that? Let's get into things. Drawbox started out as being completely text only, which made things admittedly difficult to absorb, especially considering just how much information there is to share. These days, I try to convey what I can in video form alongside a much more detailed written lesson, but while the videos do cover the major points, I still strongly encourage you to go through both. Not only is there information that will be better suited to either video or text format, but there's also only so much that can be compressed into a single video. Furthermore, and perhaps most importantly, you'll find yourself understanding the information better if you receive it in a number of different formats, and if you rewatch and reread them frequently. This video is mostly going to explain the points I mentioned in the next pages of this lesson. They may seem like superfluous, unimportant points, but they are critical to understanding what Drawbox is for and how it's meant to be used to be most effective for you. Watch the video and read through the text content before moving on to the lessons and exercises so you don't risk wasting your time later on. About Drawbox. This page explores what was covered in the intro video from the last page in greater detail. What is Drawbox all about? There are plenty of drawing tutorials and lessons all across the internet, and many of them are free, or at least pretty cheap. But one thing they tend to have in common is that they appeal to a beginner's desire to create something pretty right now. In doing so, they'll breeze past the fundamentals, sometimes giving them a light touch and often skipping them altogether in favor of getting to the good stuff. After all, those beginners can just learn their fundamentals elsewhere, right? Learning the fundamentals on the internet, at least for free, is actually surprisingly challenging. The information is strewn about, and a lot of people have different ideas of what the fundamentals are. Many of the resources that do exist also tend to take a path similar to most fine arts-oriented schools, focusing heavily on just draw what you see and keep doing it until it clicks. Drawbox is my attempt at providing the information beginners need before they dig into the fun stuff. Rather than providing flashy, look what you'll draw in 10 easy steps, promises, it's about introducing you to solid, proven exercises that work, given patience and determination. With some cases, for example, learning the ghosting method covered in lesson one, simply changing how one approaches and thinks about what they're doing will yield immediate results. Practice and mileage will always be an important component, however, and your success will rest heavily on your willingness to push through, to accept and to value the many failures you experience along the way, rather than fearing or hating them. At its core, what Drawbox is meant to teach can be summarized in a few points. Conscientiousness, the patience to plan, prepare, and think through each mark you put down. Confidence, the willingness to push forwards without hesitation once your preparations are complete. Spatial awareness. Not just an understanding of the forms you're drawing as they exist in 3D space, but an actual belief in the illusion that you're crafting. That you're not simply drawing lines on a flat page, but rather creating actual solid masses in a three-dimensional world. Construction. The ability to see the complex objects around you, break them down into their simplest components, and use them to recreate them in your drawing, building up from their simplest core elements and gradually breaking them down to greater levels of complexity. Visual communication. The skills required to take the ideas you have and convey them clearly and directly to an audience. 
Drawbox is about learning how to get started on this journey of yours. I'm not promising you mastery in any of these areas, but rather equipping you with what you need to start trundling down that dirt road in the right direction. How should Drawbox be used? To keep it short and sweet, follow the instructions exactly as they are written. Don't sit there and grind an exercise until it's perfect. Pace yourself, this is not a race, and right now speed is not a concern. Don't work in a vacuum, get others' eyes on your work. Don't interpret or alter the exercises as you see fit. Many of the exercises here are by their very nature bland and uninteresting. They're also quite effective at building towards very specific goals. If you alter the exercises to make them more interesting, while you're busy being entertained by your work, you'll also be more likely to miss the point of the exercise altogether, or at least diminish its effectiveness. Do not rush. A lot of beginners will come in asking, how long should I take? Or am I going too slow? You take exactly as long as you need to in order to complete the work to the best of your current ability. If that takes a week, a month, a year, it doesn't matter. Don't be afraid to take breaks either. If you catch yourself feeling tired or bored, it's better to give yourself a rest rather than accepting the sloppiness that will follow. Your stamina, just like everything else, is something that will grow with time. You may not be able to sit and focus for more than half an hour right now, but you'll be able to go for hours in the future. Each exercise comes with a recommended number of pages. That's not a minimum. And you're not expected to do more than that as part of a lesson's homework. That's the number of pages you should expect to do for now. While doing them, strive to make efficient use of the page. Don't draw three lines in the center and call it done. Fill as much of it as you can while putting the time and effort in to do it to the best of your current ability. That said, know that once those pages are full, you can and should move on. The goal isn't to master each exercise on your own. It's to create a body of work that consists of the best of what you can do at this moment, so someone else can take a look and point out any major areas where you're misunderstanding important concepts, something that is extremely difficult to do on your own. Once you've completed a lesson and moved on, you will still be expected to incorporate those lessons into a regular warm-up routine. Pick two or three exercises at the beginning of each sitting from all the exercises you've learned thus far and do them for 10 to 15 minutes. That'll allow you to continue honing those specific skills without impeding your ability to move forward. Who is Drawbox for? The lessons here were written with two distinct groups in mind. Complete and total beginners. These fresh-faced newbies are great because they come in without much in the way of preconceptions or arrogance and are much more likely to follow instructions to the letter, as they're meant to be, and therefore absorb the information as intended. Their inexperience is in many ways a considerable advantage, being a clean slate as they are. Self-taught amateurs. I don't say amateur to be rude, it's simply the most accurate term to describe someone who's got experience under their belt but is still finding their way. Having been one myself when I was introduced to the concepts I present here, I actually started out hoping to help those who'd been largely self-taught and unstructured in their approach to learning. Such students tend to have some of their fundamentals sorted out, but there tends to be plenty of holes and inconsistencies there. This requires them to unlearn habits and fill things in as they go, and they end up fighting a great deal against what they already think they know. While this results in a great deal of struggling near the beginning, it usually results in somewhat more rapid improvement as well. All in all, everyone would benefit from going back to the basics and refining their ability to capture the illusion of solid form and weight. But these two groups are the main ones I'm looking to help. What matters most is that if you've decided to follow these lessons, it means you've put a certain degree of trust in the approach covered here. So as long as you hold enough trust in this source to continue using it, then do so in its entirety. Don't half-ass it. A critical warning. 
Drawing for fun is mandatory. There is something I found myself having to say a great deal over the last few years. So at this point, I think it's critical that I state it here, and it's equally critical that you understand. As such, I've separated this out into its own page to give you the best chances of actually reading this. You should not be devoting every moment you spend drawing to your growth as an artist. Too many students think that the only way they'll get good is if they do nothing but practice, and they feel that any time spent drawing but not doing exercises is time wasted. This is simply not true, and more than that, it's extremely harmful. I recommend that of all the time you spend drawing, you only spend half of that on improving, however that may be. Whether it's working through Drawbox, some other course, or even just doing structured studies of your own, the other half should be dedicated to drawing for the sake of drawing. You've likely gone into this endeavor for a reason, and unless you pursue that goal throughout, you risk losing grip on it. That means trying to draw those characters, vehicles, props, clothes, cultures, worlds you love now, whether you feel you're ready or not. And no, you won't be ready at first, and you won't be ready for a long time, but it doesn't matter. Don't get caught up on whether or not you're ready. Focus on what you'd draw if you were the most proficient artist in the world. Then draw that. Poorly. Use whatever tools you feel like using. Whether you're actually having fun or not, the main focus here is drawing without having to worry about the time actually improving your skills in any way. The main focus here is drawing without having to worry about that time actually improving your skills in any way. Sure, if you grind your studies every moment you can spare and you somehow manage not to burn out along the way, you'll come out with considerable technical skill. You'll also have no idea of how to apply it, and, as many will tell you, facing that reality and overcoming it is perhaps more difficult than learning to draw in the first place. Tools of the trade Pens, fine liners size 0.5 At its core, Drawbox consists of seven lessons. There have been others, and there will be others in the future, but when you think Drawbox, you're thinking of lessons 1 through 7. While the other lessons have had other recommended tools ranging from a Pierre Noir Conte à Paris pencils to digital media, the core seven lessons should be done with ink, specifically a style of pen known as fine liners. In some places, they're also known as felt tips or technical pens, but these can also refer to different kinds of tools, so make sure you compare them to the image above and the different brands mentioned here. Basically, as you can see in the image above, their tips have metal barrels with a felt nib. I'm not here to try and teach you how to draw with ink, Thank goodness for that, as I'm a digital artist myself. I have chosen these kinds of pens, however, because they complement the lesson material and the concepts being covered. And more than anything, they help encourage the kinds of habits and respect for your line work that goes hand in hand with everything else I am trying to teach. I explain this in greater detail in this article, Why Ink? They do that by producing a rich, dark line regardless of how much pressure you apply. Their only dimension of variance is the weight of the stroke. The 0.5 size for most brands is ideal, as it allows for a great range of weights. I do not want you to use different pens in the same drawing. Don't go drawing in a 0.3 and then going over it with a 0.5 or anything like that. Ideally, if you can, pick up the 0.5s in bulk. Aside from that, the brands I've used include Stadler Pigment Liners and Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pens. Their sizing is different, F is equivalent to 0.5, but you're not limited to these. There are many other brands, ranging from Copic Multiliners to Sakura Microns, and hell, even Sharpies! The Ultrafines and Sharpie Pens will do. Just make sure that when you're drawing with these, that you're not applying too much pressure. Students have a tendency of damaging their pen tips this way, which reduces the flow of ink and forces one to draw with the pen held at a higher angle to achieve the same rich marks. 
Most think that their pens have just died, but these things can actually last for a good while, even with all the drawing that we do for these lessons. That said, do expect to end up buying quite a few if you're in it for the long haul, from lesson 1 to 7. Pens can get a little pricey, so find a brand with a price point and quality balance that works for you. It's worth mentioning that since students sometimes have trouble finding fine liner pens at reasonable prices, Drawbox is now selling them in packs of 10 for $16.50 USD, with free shipping in the United States and other international options available as well. If you can get your hands on pens from local art supply stores, especially in person, then that may still be a better option, but this is largely to provide an alternative to many of the less than ideal options out there. Paper. All I ask is that you don't draw on lined paper or like napkins. In fact, above all else, I highly recommend using regular printer paper. It's a great size, A4, 8.5 inches by 11 inches, and will allow plenty of room to think through spatial problems. As you get smaller and more cramped, this can become a problem. It's not going to fold back over while you're drawing like a sketchbook might, and it's not going to leave you feeling afraid of ruining a sketchbook. If you insist on using something fancier, try not to go too small, and if it's a sketchbook, ringed is better as it lets you fold the pages back and get them out of your way. Other tools. Certain lessons and exercises will require other tools as well, ranging from simple rulers, generally you can use any sort of straight edge, to ellipse guides and French curves in lessons 6 and 7. Ellipse guides slash templates come in sets and can get expensive, but you can usually shop around online and find them for cheaper on places like eBay. They are extremely useful, however, I wouldn't recommend buying them until you've actually reached those lessons. Once you do, they are a sound investment. So that is the end of lesson zero. I plan to record audiobook versions of more lessons in the future, so please be on the lookout for that. I'm also planning on posting more videos of me doing the exercises in real time so you can see how fast or slow or well or poorly someone does it in real life. I hope you enjoyed and see you soon!